What is an infection and what is inflammation? What's the difference between the two? And how can you know that you have an infection? In this video, we'll devote a fair amount. In this video, we'll talk about the difference between infection and inflammation and talk about the very specific characteristics that you need to pay attention to to know if you have an infection or not. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and push the note. And hit the notification bell for notifications of future episodes. Now let's get now let's get started. So in inf so inflammation is a very broad range of conditions. Inflammation is a very broad term that refers to a response by the immune system that launches all sorts of different mechanisms to fight off either an infection or generate a response to something else, whether it's an irritant or an allergen or sometimes an unknown factor. Inflammation in all cases results in very similar mechanisms, but they're not identical. Those mechanisms involve <clears throat> Those mechanisms involves release of inflammatory cytokines, meaning molecules that activate the immune system either locally or from afar. They also, cytokines also cause, cytokines also cause vasodilation, which is in, which is in, which is, which is enlargement of blood vessels and sometimes increased permeability of those blood vessels. Inflammatory cytokines can also cause infla inflammatory cytokines can also cause mobilization and recruitment of inflammatory cells, specifically white blood cells, which are a very diverse category of cells. And inflammatory cytokines can also induce swelling and in other and inflammatory cytokines can also induce swelling in other in other characteristics of inflammation. Inflammation, as I've mentioned, has inflammation, as I've mentioned, has many different triggers, some of which are known and some of which are unknown, but that is but inflammation stands in contrast with infection. Infection is a situation with infection is a situation where a foreign organism, either a microbe or sometimes something even larger than a microbe, like a worm or a mite, invades the body and invades the body, multiplies out of place, and causes damage to the host and causes damage to the host, whether it's a human or another organism. And that can sometimes result in launching an immune response, but that's not a given. So some infections that launch an immune response, some infections that trigger an immune response, and those are the vast majority of them, are bacterial infections such as infections with MRSA, methicillin-resistant staphylococcus, such as infections with methicillin-resistant staphylococcus aureus, infections with streptococcus pyogenes, infections with streptococcus, some viral infections like infections with herpes simplex viral infection, and infections with in fungal infections as well. However, some infections do not actually cause inflammation. In fact, some of them are focused on subduing or In fact, some infectious organisms are actually very good at suppressing the inflammatory response and thereby evade the immune system and immune surveillance. Two examples of that are human papillomavirus infections, in which you can see warts, but there's usually no redness, no itch, no characteristics of inflammation around those lesions. And HIV, which can cause any and the human immunodeficiency virus, which actually targets specifically immune cells, specifically T helper cells, and suppresses an immune response against itself and against other organisms as well, leading to a systemic immune deficiency, which can many times lead to death if the viral infection is not treated and suppressed. So the difference between infection and inflammation are 
So while many infections can lead to inflammation, not every case of inflammation is caused by an infection. And in fact, many cases of inflammation or irritation of the skin are not caused by an infectious organism. So the treatment of each case of inflammation needs to be different and specific to the cause that has led to the irritation of the skin, whether it's an infectious organism, in which, in which case, the ir whether it's an infectious organism, in which case we need to target the infecting organism specifically with either antimicrobials, with, anti with antibiotics if we're dealing with a bacterial element, with antifungal, with antibacterials if we're dealing with a bacterial element, with antifungals if we're, le if we're dealing with a fungus, with antivirals if we're dealing with a viral infection, and if we're dealing with something more complex, like a parasitic infection, in the case of scabies or lice or worms, we need a specific medication to target those organisms, take them out, and allow the body to recover. Distinctly from that, different, distinctly from that, inflammation that is not due to infection, such as in the case of irritant contact dermatitis or allergic contact dermatitis, the treatment is quite different. First of all, we need to withdraw, if we can recognize it, we need to withdraw the inciting or the triggering agent if there is an irritant that comes in contact with the skin, if there is an allergen that comes in contact with the skin and has led to the irritation, to the redness, to the flakiness, to the itch, we need to withdraw those things first and foremost and then address the resulting irritation to decrease the symptoms and and make them go away. So how does one know? If you enjoyed this episode, share, like it. If you've enjoyed this episode so far, share, like, and subscribe. Put a comment in the comment section and tell me what sort of infections have you dealt with in your life and what sort of treatment worked for you? And what sort of treatment worked for you? So distinguishing between an irritation and inf so distinguishing between infection and run of the mill it so distinguishing between infection and other types of inflammation is extremely important because that can determine the right course of action and that could be a and that can also and that can also make the difference between life and death because if you let an infection go untreated, you risk the you risk spreading of the infection and eventually taking over. You risk spreading of the you risk spreading of the infection to other body parts and eventually if could and in the more severe cases that can lead to serious injury and death. As opposed to that, severe inflammation is usually not as opposed to that, severe inflammation is usually not something that would that would spread to other parts of the body, but definitely needs to be addressed and make but definitely needs to be addressed and resolved. So what are the key symptoms to pay attention to to know whether or not you have an infection or inflammation in this or inflammation such as or inflammation such as allergic contact dermatitis or irritant contact dermatitis. Before we get into that, let's just make one point very clear. If you're in doubt whether or not you have an infection or not, go see a physician right away. An infection can be very serious. An infection of the skin can be a very serious matter and needs to be treated with specific it needs to be dealt with specifically, quickly, and to the point, and with the right time frame to make sure that your symptoms, that your condition is addressed and your symptoms have resolved. So make sure to see your dermatologist or another physician. Seek help immediately if you're in doubt. So let's take about, let's take a look at the, let's take a look at some differences between inflammation and infection. So inflammation and infection can both hmm. 
So let's make a distinction between bacterial infection of the skin, meaning cellulitis, and dermatitis, which is caused by inf which is caused by irritants or alert or allergens, and can lead to red areas on the skin. So what is what are some key differences between an infection of the skin or inflammation of the skin? Well, they're both. Well, both these areas can look distinctly red and can have some flakiness to them and some skin breakdown. And both conditions can actually lead to pus formation on the skin in the very, very extreme cases. The, dif the difference is starts, the differences start fleshing themselves out when we look at the intensity of the symptoms. So an infection of the skin is usually very painful excruciatingly painful over the area and there's a greater degree of inflammation over an infection over an infected area of the skin as opposed to an inflamed area of the skin that's been inflamed by an irritant or an allergen so the pain factor is much greater in most cases of infection as opposed to inflammation of the skin Consistently, consistently, again, with the degree of inflammation that an infection can lead to versus the degree of inflammation that irritation or an allergic reaction can lead to, the inflammation in the case of an infection is usually much greater as well, is usually much greater, which can lead to more intense redness over the area, especially when we're dealing with milder cases of inflammation as opposed to infection of the skin. So the areas that are usually... So an infection is usually characterized by very bright, intense redness as opposed to inflammation, which may have varying degrees of redness, but may not be as bright red as an infection. An infection of the skin can lead to intense swelling of the area and maybe even abscess formation. Irritation of the skin can actually result in swelling of the area, but the swelling in most cases, unless it's a very severe case of irritation, the swelling is not as pronounced as it would be in the case of an infection. When it comes to discharge, infection of the skin can actually lead to can lead to purulent discharge, meaning pus discharge over the areas that are affected, can even lead to abscess formation, meaning pockets of pus underneath the skin that can be extremely painful and need to be drained. In the case of inflammation, such as an irritant contact dermatitis or allergic contact dermatitis, pus formation is not a common phenomenon and abscess formation is, is even more rare, so that is not something that you usually see in the case of irritation of the skin. And finally, infections can actually manifest systemically, meaning a person who is experiencing an infection of the skin can experience fevers and chills and can be quite ill, especially if the infection is widespread and a large area of the skin is involved. In the case of irritant or allergic contact dermatitis, even if the condition is very severe, fevers or chills are extremely rare, so we don't normally see those manifestations occur that being said, as I said at the beginning of this, as I said at the beginning of this comparative list, if you're in doubt whether or not you have an infection or an inflammation, seek help from a physician and find out exactly what you need. And find out exactly what you have, what needs to be done, what, what the treatment is, what the time frame is, and follow up to make sure that you're getting resolution and and follow up to make sure that your symptoms have been addressed adequately and your symptoms have resolved. If you've liked this video, share like the if you've liked this video, share, like, and subscribe. Put a comment in the comments section and tell me what sort of and, and tell me how has this video helped you make the distinction or tell the difference between an infection and an inflammation. I'm looking forward to hearing your comments. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell for notification of future episodes. More great content coming your way right from this channel. Thanks for watching and God bless.